You're right, everyone. Ace here from Romany Custom Carports. So I'm going to attempt doing a video from start to finish of a build. So it's going to be a little bit of talking like I'm doing now and some real time stuff. And then we're going to do some hyperlapse and hopefully get it throughout the whole process. So what we've got here is the start of a build, the beginning of a build, the birth of a build, if you like. Uh, this particular build I'm working on is a Utah Raptor over the top, a right hand hold. It's based on a juvenile size, but it's not going to be juvenile size. There's a lot of modifications gone into it. I've reshaped in certain places to allow more space for hand and a few little alterations, which I feel is going to work really well with this size of build. Uh, so I'm rethinking how I've done it. It's been reduced down to 85mm out of width with 25mm tips, which only leaves 30mm in the middle. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, and it's going to be a real unique colour scheme that I'm going with this. I'm going to have some fun with it, uh, because I've been told to do as I please. That might work out well, it might not, but we'll see and we'll share the experience together. So yeah, it's all drawn all up on paper by a template. The next step will be to cut this out and then we'll use that as a template for the next layers of the build. I've also included a little bit of complexity on the core on this just to show you how I'll work with that. But yeah, we'll see how we go. 85mm outer width that I'm looking for, but I'll probably cut this to about 86 That allows room for shaping down and cutting in and taking away a little bit um, and sanding. You can always take off, but you can never put back on. So, uh, yeah, first stage done. Let's get cutting. So this particular G10 that I'm cutting here is a 5mm JG10. And it's not the easiest of G10s to cut. Uh, when I say not the easiest, JG10 in general, which is a testimony to its quality and strength. It's one of the strongest G10s you can get, I find personally. But we managed to get through it even on a semi-blunt blade. So after taking the core off the bandsaw, the edges are a little bit rough around the edges. So I'm using a Dremel here and an 80 grit sanding drum just to kind of shape it all in. Just add a little bit of finesse to the core, make it nice and smooth around the edges. I use the Dremel because I can do little bits here and there and kind of just go by feel and get it just how I want it. And get the dimensions in exactly where I need them to be before we start doing the, the next stage of the build. Right, so we've got the basis of our catapult cut all out. We've prepped one side, sanded it to 180, quick sand over, a couple of little dimples in there just to, to help the glue stick. Now this particular design, like I said before, is based on a juvenile, but I have changed it slightly, made it slightly bigger in places. Uh, I've got a small hand, it fits me quite comfortable but by the time this build is finished it's going to feel a lot bigger because we're obviously going to round in the sh bits in here and whatnot so you can't really tell how it's going to feel at this point um i've oversized the measurements got it all in a little bit bigger than it needs to be we're looking at 85 25 but we're probably 86 25 and a half because we're allowing a little bit extra to sand back uh now we've got that all done we will draw up the next layers of this build which are the half a mil black liners we are going to need two of these although one of them will be benched till a little bit later on in the build because i'm doing a split core on this build it can't all be glued up in one go much more time consuming build because it's got to be layered up one by one so the next stage for this will be to get both of these black I'm hoping we've got enough space on here. I have actually calculated it, so that's how we do it. How have I managed to do this? Ah, there we go. So we're going to get these glued on here. I don't need to be too exact because this piece of material is a little bit small now anyway, but we'll keep it into a corner as best we can. Get this one drawn up nice and quick. Making sure when you cut these liners out, don't cut them exactly to the line. Cut them out rough, a little bit extra space. 
which will make gluing them up much more easier. Right, there you go. As you can see, we've got those two. I'm going to get these cut out, get them prepped, and we'll get one of them glued on. And I'll be back when we are ready to glue. Right, everyone. We now have the liners cut out. Um, one of which we do not need till later on in the build, so we're only using one liner. I know what you're all thinking, this looks like a messy glue station, some people make it look so much more cleaner, but all of my build stages, to be fair, are a little bit on the messy side. Right, so we'll mix a 50-50 mix-up. I use Z Epoxy or Z Epoxy from Zap. It's never let me down, different people use different glues. We shouldn't need too much, probably put too much out to be fair because we need a thin layer. I know it looks like I'm just guessing these measurements but I've done it for so long I kind of know what works and what doesn't. So <clears throat> this all comes with experience. We'll mix it up. nice and quickly and I'll just show you how I glue and what clamps I use and why as we do it you'll also notice I don't use gloves I love to have a feel for things gloves just don't work for me I'd rather keep washing my hands same as in the shed uh, I always recommend using masks and stuff like that and eye protectors I, sh I recommend it but I don't and it's silly but I've been doing it so long without and like I say I, I like to get a feel for things so, we always remember which side you're gluing. <clears throat> you don't want to make that mistake. I've done that before. <clears throat> right, here we go. We don't want to lay it on too thick because then there's too much to squeeze out the sides and you could end up with glue lines. And you've got to remember you're gluing both sides. So, just a slither of it is enough to do the job. First one done, again, make sure you glue in the right side. I know some people will be in despair of me not using gloves, but like I say, I get it washed off my hands pretty quick. The one thing I've never took into account is switching my phone off after this video is done, so that's going to be fun. I do have a kitchen roll in there to wipe my hands over. Right, now this is why I always oversize a little bit because it makes it much easier to glue up. Clamps I use are spring clamps. I don't like solid clamps, they, they don't work for me. Spring clamps work much better, although they do have their risks because when you put them on, they can slip and slide. So you've got to keep checking, making sure everything's where it should be. I get one on in the middle. We'll get the forks done. That should hold it all in place a little bit better. We'll get the other fork done. Now we're looking like we're on all round. A little bit of an adjustment there. We'll go down the middle. Like so. And to finish off the handle, we'll get one on the bottom. Now we'll just check round to make sure everything is where it should be. We'll get another one on the corner here. We'll get another one slid in there. And there you have it. Seven clamps on that build. We'll adjust that one down a little bit. We just check all the way around the build to make sure that that build is on where it should be. And there you have it. Glue takes, this particular glue will take two days to cure, but I'm happy to work it after a couple of hours. Uh, but curing time is about two days. So there you go, that's that glued all up. I'm gonna have a tidy up and uh, you'll see me once that's all solid. Right, next job to do in regards to this build is the next layer. As you can see, 
We've got it drawn up, but we've got lines going through as we're splitting the core into three sections. What I take away with the blade, I will replace back in with a black spacer, so it will all match up. Uh, first, I'm going to cut along the lines, and then I've got to run the pieces along a right angle, a good level right angle on a flat surface, to get each edge perfectly flat so it all joins back together perfect with no glue lines as such so yeah i'm gonna get this cut out no need to video it it's self-explanatory uh and then i will get back to you once it's done Right, as you can see, we have got the third layer of the build glued up. It's a five part layer. Now, after this video, you're going to see a hyperlapse of me gluing it up. It took about 15 minutes for me to glue that up. Uh, the hyperlapse is 21 seconds. I was going to talk over it, but it's not long enough. It looks like I'm just guessing where I'm doing stuff. But on the actual face of the build, I drew lines across where the spaces were going to go with pencil, lines down the sides of the build, so I pretty much know where everything had to be. Under spring clamps, it does move with the glue. It slips and it slides. You need the top section in first, but there's a lot of movement, and you'll see on the, uh, you'll kind of see on the high plats what I mean. It's, it's painstaking, it's frustrating, but you've got to do it to get it all tight. And what actually happens is these little liners, the black liners, they pop up. So you've got to keep pushing them down and making them stay down until you've got it to where you want to go. It is a nightmare to do, but it's doable. I've landed that. Everything's exactly where I want it to be. So, uh, yeah, next time you see this build, this will all be spun all in flat. And I will have that glued on and we'll be ready for drilling for the clips. Over and out. Right, so we're at the stage now where we're going to be drilling the frame for the clips. Um, we're using a 5mm drill bit. As you can see, we've got lines drawn on it. Black is always the worst colour. Some people might say put tape on this, but I find if I put masking tape on and do it, I can't be as direct with the, the holes. It kind of mashes the, the tape up. And I, this is how I like to do it. Now you can see we've got... If I do it like that, we've got the top line going across that's five mil from the top so that's where the band's going to sit the second line underneath is two and a half mil lower and it's the bottom crosshairs the bottom ones that we're going to be drilling uh and i'm going to show you why now so and what i do just a little bit of a hole that looks very good for a first time effort at this point i can still adjust around a little bit so we need to come this way a little bit more which i can do now that's looking good to me nice sharp cobalt drill bit nice and steady and we're through now as you can see that drill bit is drilled on the second crosshair the top of the hole needs to just about line up with that top line as you can see and that is pretty much as perfect as you're going to do it freehand now i just take my time with the second one the Getting them matched side to side level this way is aesthetically pleasing and it's how I'm going to do it, but it's not a must. The main important thing is we get the height of the holes perfectly matching each other. So when you put the band in, one side doesn't go down further than the other when it hits the rib nut. So we want the tops perfect. As you can see, that's as perfect as I'm going to drill that. So now I'm going to drill the next three holes and I shall do a video of you showing you them after I've done this. Another quick thing is that line 
there is six mil from the edge and then to the next line is 12 mil because we're on 25 mil tips sometimes it's 11 mil more likely than not sometimes i even go down as low as 10 never less than 10 because the bulk cups are 10 mil each so this one's got a decent amount of space six mil from the edge 12 mil across five mil for the first line seven and a half for the second and i do it all freehand right let's crack on right so we've got the next stage of the build and that's for in a minute now i need to create a fence to put the front face on so i've got a piece of flat material here it could be anything really i'm just using something with a nice edge i'm going to put it on roughly where i think it needs to go we'll put a clamp on that side and a clamp on that side i've got a metal ruler which measures from the edge now i'm looking for 14 mil because that is the size we do with clips Knock that down a little bit. This is a quick job. That's bang on 14. This side a little bit more. We've got bang on 14 mil that side, if you can see how I'm doing it. All the way along. All the way along. That's nice. Now what I'm going to do, I'll place that like that. Cellar tape. I'm creating a barrier or a fence as I call it to right down to the material. So it's three and four. Five. And six. Take the clamps off. There we have our fence. Now I will cut the excess off with a Stanley blade out of the video, but I'm just going to do the show you now. So I'm sliding that over the material I want. I've got a nice level edge here. Putting that on there like so. Get it right over. So I get the most out of my material. That looks decent enough to me. That is going to be the front face. So I'm going to go in the shed now, cut this out get it glued on and the next phase that you will see is me drilling for the pins this build is coming along absolutely lovely catch you on the next one right so i've marked up where i want the holes to be as you can see there just two for the top of this uh, each build isn't identical but i have a good idea where i'm doing them so i'll do one just to show you all. This is a brand new drill bit, nice and sharp. You don't force it too much, just let the drill bit do its work. Using a brand new drill bit, you reduce the whiting that happens around the pin. So always use the drill bits I do on builds. So that's one done. This one will be exactly the same, but with a 7.9mm drill bit for an 8mm annual. So yeah, easy as she goes. Right, so holes have been drilled. Really happy with the holes where they are. Uh, minimal whiting around the pins this is going to come out beautiful this build uh, i never done a video of the pins but the pins are made of carbon fiber four mil carbon fiber pins and an eight mil carbon fiber lanyard pin everything fits as it should do had to go through these with a four mil chainsaw file just to open up a little bit so they'd slide in nice so yeah i'm going to get these glued in uh i've already glued a bead up or materials to make a bead with and this is coming on beautiful. One thing I will say with the pins, 
I don't know whether you can see, but I've put an indentation around the center of them with a Dremel sanding drum, just so I get that little bit better bond uh, when I've glued them in. But other than that, the next time you see this is when we are getting the clips on. But this is pretty much what I call the build complete, the actual the solid part of the build complete. Uh, the rest is clips. If I if I mess up the clips, I can redo them. This is the main thing to get right, and uh, I'm extremely happy with it. So yeah, let's get these glued in and bring on the clips. So what I'm doing now is sanding the carbon pins down so they're flush with the rest of the frame. I am then taking the piece of material I'm using for clips to flush the edge of that right down nice and smooth. So we've got a nice level edge to go against the, the front face. Countersinking the holes for the rib nuts and cutting the clips out and once we've done that we'll flush fit the clips down so they fit nice and level all around the sides and then shape them all in drill for the optics and that's pretty much this stage of the build done before we finish with the shaping which normally takes me around about 15 minutes on this build right so now we've got the pins flush to the frame. We have got the clips all cut out, drilled. We've got the holes countersunk at the right level at the back. We've got these all chamfered round. Very important to round the corners off on the clips and whatnot to stop from band cutting. We've drilled for the optics. The next stage now is to get it all shaped up. First thing we'll do is we'll put the slant on the tips. Then we'll put the clips on and we'll shape the full frame, shape the clip down with the optics uh, and then shape the bead and drill the bead. And then that is this build completed. All the rest of the work is all done by hand with uh, a bit of hand sanding. But so far, so good. Really, really happy. So all my shaping is done freehand with the Dremel and an 80 grit sanding drum, a half inch sanding drum, little by little. Don't take too much off in one go because obviously you can't put it back. So we just keep going round and round. It's quite simple for me now because I pretty much know the shape I'm looking for. But this is the only way you can do it really custom is by using a Dremel. It works for me pretty good. Right, so that's the catapult all shaped up. Firstly, the bead's been shaped up nicely. I've gone around it with a bit softer sanding drum as well to make it a bit easier to sand in a minute. It's all drilled all in. The frame is shaped up nice. Uh, I can make it look easy shaping the frames up, to be fair, because I've done so many. It holds lovely. This juvenile Utah Raptor that's been opened up a bit just feels, it's one of the best holding ones I've felt, to be fair. Happy with where the optics are going. Again, guesswork for me, a guesstimation, but I pretty much know what five millers have done that many. Slanted tips are nice. The whole build has come together really, really nice. So the next step is sanding. This is my trusty sanding tube. Now I'm gonna wrap 180 grit around this and I'm gonna sand it like a violin, all the way around, violin, all the way around. Once I've gone all the way around like a violin, sanding the crosswoods, and got all the deep scratches out that the Dremel's caused, then I shall be getting 180 grit again and sanding it along the build. So this is gonna get sanded twice by 180 grit. Now I'd say this frame is shaped in 95%. The last 5% is done with the sanding. So uh, yeah, 180 grit times two. One way and then the other way. And then we're indoors for the wet sanding. So the next time you'll see this build, I would say, is once I've got the 180 grit on. So far, so good. Right, so I managed to get the 180 grit sandpaper on, sanding it in multi-directions. And I have just finished wet sanding. As you can see, I'm sat on the floor with a bucket of warm water, a very dirty bucket full of carbon dust, but uh, warm water. And I have literally just finished the last grit, which was 800. Now on a build that is solely G10, I sand 400, 800 after the 180 grit. Uh, I find it does the job. I prefer my G10 to have a satin 
look i don't like it to be really shiny i think it then makes it look cheaper and plasticky so i kind of keep it to 400 uh, to 800 grit the only way i sand g10 any higher than that is if i'm sanding it when it's attached to a material that requires sanding up to 3000 like carbon fiber resins metals and such like that some materials look better with a gloss shine uh, so i will sand it up to that grit if it's stuck to those materials but on its own I find 800 grit to be the best finish, to be honest with you. I think it looks best. If it requested otherwise, then so be it. But other than that, that's the best I do. We've got the bead all done. We've got the clips all done. I'm going to rinse this over and then I'm going to polish it. Uh, for polishing, I'm using an Auto Glim Metal Polish, which I find works really, really well, not just on metal, but on everything else. And I'm going to work it in by hand with uh, toilet paper. A good quality toilet paper i might say but i find the toilet paper is better than kitchen roll and or anything else so the next time you see this build it will be polished and finished yeah so far so good really really happy she's looking good so here we have it all finished complete with a matching cross matching bead yeah i'm over the moon with the build quality second to none all the joins are lovely clips are nice bolts done nice really happy with this build thanks for watching if you if you well spent the time it's gonna i've took to have watched this video i know the quality isn't the best but i'm gonna get better at doing these type of videos i'm gonna do more i'm gonna do a complete hyperlapse of another build just hyperlapse from start to finish which will be a lot easier to watch than i suppose this is but i wanted to explain each process of building this catapult each stage of the process i should say and obviously that's going to take time but uh thanks all like i say for watching this build will feature on a full in-depth look video so i'm going to do an in-depth look into this video separate to this video but this will be followed up with some pictures of it like i say thanks for coming on the journey with me for this build i hope i explained everything clear enough and as it should be and i'll catch you all again soon thanks all for the support